now with the very latest. First, let's head out to Russ McQuaid, who was there as police started using tear gas tonight. And Russ, it looks like that's happening again uh, right now as we speak. Halfway between the city county building and Monument Circle. You have seen IMPD just moments ago move on a crowd of hundreds of people that were locked arm in arm at Pennsylvania and Market Street. They have just fired perhaps a dozen rounds of tear gas. This is the second time in the last hour that tear gas has been deployed along East Market Street. The first time was just about an hour ago at the corner of Alabama and Market right near the Whole Foods. That broke up a crowd there. You can see the shots being fired now. Uh, for the last hour or so, this crowd moved from the Whole Foods area over here halfway to Monument Circle. This is where the looting began again with windows broken out of a bank, the comic book store. We've also heard reports that Circle Center Mall has been breached a second time. I'm looking up into the uh, parking structures and I can see spotters for IMPD up above there. And listening to an IMPD commander brief his uh, staff and his officers, he said they are very good with their tactics in competing and matching with ours. We saw these people tear gassed and at least six or seven people arrested at Whole Foods uh, just about an hour ago. The crowds then ran through the streets soaking themselves with milk and also with water to keep uh, to negate the uh, factors of the tear gas. Also, tear gas was thrown in the vicinity of 251 East Ohio Street. That is the building that houses the Marion County Prosecutor's Office. As a result, there was uh, several uh, tear gas canisters ejected there. Massachusetts Avenue, which was open for dinner tonight, suddenly shut down just about 9 o'clock and evacuated everybody out of that area. This is an indication of IMPD's new tactic in responding to this. Last night, with guidance, from others, IMPD sat back <clears throat> and watched as the crowds began to rampage throughout downtown before they could get a handle on it. I attended a uh, talk to several top commanders just about five o'clock this afternoon. They said their new tactic was to move in forcefully before the crowd could uh, begin to uh, mass and, well, not only mass, but also to, uh, to riot or to loot. And then they also, um, decide to move in and they were going to try to keep an eye on what they believe to be the ringleaders to try to grab those people out of the maelstrom before they could get the rest of the crowd worked up. Apparently that is what happened last night. Some of the arrests last night were people from North Carolina and from outside of Marion County as far away as uh, Terre Haute and Bluffton, which means we had people coming from across the state to Indianapolis to voice their opposition to what they feel has been an uh, unequal justice system, but also by the same token to partake in the rioting and the looting of the stores downtown that occurred. Much of downtown, as I reported earlier this afternoon, is boarded up as if it is attempting to hold off a hurricane. A lot of windows boarded up, uh, even of stores that did not have their gun, their windows broken out. And now you can see for the first time in about an hour, traffic beginning to flow uh, through the intersection of Pennsylvania Street at Market. That crowd has dispersed. They have headed back westbound on Market Street, where a lot of damage was done over by the Indiana State House yesterday. We will continue to update this story as the evening progresses. Live on Market Street in downtown Indianapolis, Russ McQuaid, Fox 59 News. Russ, thanks. Just down the street there from the circle at Market in Pennsylvania, right by that Huntington Bank where police were advancing. We'd seen reports earlier too, Lindsay, of uh, people vandalizing uh, windows of that Huntington Bank right there at Market in Pennsylvania tonight. Yes, those reports came in just within, I would say, the last 30 yeah. minutes or so. And as we mentioned at the top of the show, we have several crews yeah. out covering these protests right now. Yeah, Fox 59's Aaron Cantrell is uh, also downtown tonight. Aaron, where are you and what are you seeing right now at your location? Well, Dan and Lindsay, I'm currently at Pennsylvania in Washington here at the intersection. And you can see right here behind me, protesters have gathered in the middle of the intersection blocking traffic actually not letting cars pass by I've seen several different incidents happen earlier today it was very peaceful but soon that translated over into some destruction probably about an hour ago people have busted out a few windows we even saw one car driving recklessly down Pennsylvania almost um, hitting and injuring pedestrians, but we later found out that they were trying to allow protesters to cross the road. But there are some people who are trying to stay away from the violence, but there are some 
who are trying to cause vandalism. Uh, we do know police have used tear gas on some of the protesters here, um, but we will continue to monitor this. They seem to be moving up and down Pennsylvania right now, so if you plan on coming out, I would avoid downtown because they are blocking traffic right now, but we'll continue to stay out here and keep monitor of this, but for now reporting live in downtown, I'm going to send it back to you, Lindsay and Dan. All right, thanks so much, Aaron. Hey, stay safe out there. Yeah. Be careful. We'll, we'll check in with you in a little bit, but again, stay safe. Fox 59's Brett Cass has been covering these protests since they started last night. He joins us now live not too far from where Aaron is. Brett, where exactly are you and what are you seeing out there? Yeah, Lindsay, we're on Mass Ave right now, and as you can see here, the scene uh, is pretty calm. We actually were walking by, as you see, uh, some restaurant or uh, bars here, like Chatterbox, um, had just put some boards up on the window. We just spoke to the owner uh, a few minutes ago, putting some boards up there, just saying it's a preemptive measure. Uh, you know, this business, as he said, is kind of his life, so he just wanted to make sure uh, that, that every step was taken to make sure things are safe. And as you see, uh, we actually just had a car uh, that passed by here. Remember, Mass Ave is supposed to be closed right now. This is the dine-out indie that we're, uh, we're having right now. As you see, some restaurants have their seating open, so I'm not sure if if police move the barriers, if some protesters move the barriers, how those barriers might have been moved, but uh, traffic has been flowing through Mass Ave right now. We had protesters that were right by Dancing Ant earlier. I'd say about 10, 15 minutes ago, they marched towards uh, the war memorial there, so that, that would be uh, west here uh, downtown. But as you can see right here on Mass Ave, um, a lot of restaurants uh, that usually are open right now, uh, filled with, with uh, patrons for dinner, uh, have now closed early in anticipation uh, for what may come tonight. And as, you, as I said, uh, we had some protesters there earlier, uh, but again, they have moved off, so Mass Ave uh, is pretty quiet right now. See an activity there by the Memor War Memorial as well. Brett, thank you so much uh, for your reporting again tonight in the midst of all this. Be careful out there. Uh, the protests, meantime, continue for a fifth day in Minneapolis. These are live pictures right now from Minnesota, where George Floyd, of course, died after police kneeled on his neck while arresting him on Monday, prompting these nationwide protests. For the first time in history today, Minnesota's governor activated the state's entire National Guard. More than a thousand additional citizen soldiers and airmen were activated today. Attorney General Bill Barr says voices of the peaceful he feels have been hijacked uh, by violent radical elements, uh, but promises that justice will indeed be served. The outrage of our national community about what happened to George Floyd in Minneapolis is real and legitimate. Accountability for his death must be addressed and is being addressed through the regular process of our criminal justice system, both at the state and at the federal level. Criminal charges were filed against the former officer, Derek Chauvin, the now fired officer who held his knee on Floyd's neck for nearly nine minutes, according to the reports that have been released. The preliminary autopsy report found a combination of that restraint, potential intoxicants and underlying health issues likely contributed to Floyd's death. But of course, his death prompting uh, nationwide outrage. His family has requested a second independent autopsy be performed. All of this happening amidst a very difficult time in our country. Protests continuing today in Washington, D.C. As you see in these pictures here, protesters gathering outside of the White House for a second straight night tonight. And in Chicago, thousands of demonstrators gathered today in the popular Loop area. Protesters climbed onto a bus and a light pole and surrounded officers, as you can see right there in that video. They had a violent Friday night of protesters as well. More than 100 people were arrested and dozens of downtown businesses had their windows smashed out and looters hit several stores there. And again, the protests here in Indianapolis led to a lot of damage we saw today throughout the day. We know at least 30 buildings were damaged in the protests last night, perhaps a couple more tonight already. We saw graffiti at the Soldiers and Sailors Monument, windows busted out in several buildings here in Indianapolis, a fire set at the CVS Pharmacy, that store was looted as well. TJ Maxx and Windsor Jewelry were also looted. Some buildings spray painted with uh, sayings like, I can't breathe, which is what George Floyd was uh, telling police uh, as that officer was kneeling on his neck. We caught up with one man who was trying to clean up some of the damage that was left behind last night. 
People have to understand this is not how we make change in America. We make changes through our votes. If you don't like what's going on and you don't like the people who are controlling our police departments, vote them out. Now, most businesses downtown, as we've been telling you, as we've been showing you, are boarded up tonight. Mayor Hogsett is asking people to essentially avoid downtown Indianapolis today and let DPW address this damage. Their crews have been out since 7 a.m. involved in those cleanup efforts. The mayor had been asking protesters to leave the city at 7 p.m. tonight after the organized protests that began at 4 p.m. But as you've seen, that has not happened tonight. Downtown Indy Inc. is also responding to these violent protests that left people injured and businesses with heavy damage. The organization says it could cost millions to rebuild and restore businesses and homes that suffered damage. They're calling on all business and community leaders of all races to demand an end to illegal and dangerous behaviors that have riddled our urban core. End quote. They also say they call upon these same leaders to seek to understand the pent up anger that's existing in minority communities and speak out against injustice and inequality. Church and community leaders are outraged with what happened last night and into tonight. They say business owners shouldn't have to board up their windows in case someone wants to damage it. They too express they are hurt by the murder of George Floyd, but say people can get their point across without hurting others in the process. Last night, his window was broken in, destroyed, and the chair stolen. So now he's on the hook for the PPE loan and no job and no business. That is not peaceful protest. Right now, we are taking a, li a live look. This is downtown. I believe this is where Russ was at the beginning of the show. As you can see, there is a dumpster that is caught on fire. You can hear sirens in the background as well. This again is a live look downtown. We are not sure exactly what street this is at, but as you can see, live look happening now. Dumpster is on fire. We can see a few people walking back and forth. You just saw a police car there in the background and you can hear the faint signs of sirens as well. And, and police approaching now, yep. uh, approaching that dumpster and, and moving past that location. Russ's camera had been set up there at the corner uh, just down the street from Pennsylvania and Market where police had been advancing uh, on a group of protesters. Now you see them uh, moving uh, some of those dumpsters out of the way, uh, advancing on this location as that fire continues to burn in that dumpster. I'm trying to get a sense of where this is, right by the uh, Sensier Bank there. Uh, again, I believe this is somewhere near Market in Pennsylvania where Russ was uh, set up just moments ago where this uh, dumpster is now on fire in the midst of downtown Indianapolis on what is again a very difficult night in our city with many people out protesting the death of uh, George Floyd. Uh, it began really again as a peaceful protest but has escalated and has intensified since. It looks like uh, this is looking south down towards Bankers Life Fieldhouse. I see the five guys right there yep, on the there corner. There's uh, the off track betting site. Uh, so this this is on Pennsylvania looking south heading down towards the field house where this dumpster is now on fire in the midst of downtown Indianapolis right now, Lindsay. And these protests started at 4 o'clock, 4 till 7. They started off very peaceful. They went from the War Memorial to the Circle back to the War Memorial from 4 till 7. Very peaceful. We had no problems. And then I would say around 9 o'clock, I would say, that's when they yeah. started turning violent. And we were hearing reports of arrests and things being thrown at officers and looting and windows being smashed. So, I mean, from 4 until 7, we had no problems. It was a very peaceful demonstration. Yeah, and as Russ mentioned, a, a lot of this began to intensify when the protesters uh, moved toward the city county building and, and the Whole Foods location right near there. Uh, police uh, saying that's when uh, some protesters began to throw some projectiles at the police, uh, forcing them to use tear gas. That's what IMPD said in a statement on Twitter earlier tonight. And you can see now this uh, this dumpster on fire in the middle of downtown Indianapolis on what is again a very difficult night in our city as we continue to watch uh, these protests escalate tonight. And Lindsay, it's something city leaders have been talking about uh, all day. Mayor Hogsett uh, pleading with people really uh, to to remain calm tonight. Yes, and he said over and over, giving that four to seven window and then saying at seven o'clock asking people to go home. And like you said, city leaders took time today asking protesters to remain peaceful. Mayor Joe Hogg said and Indianapolis Police Chief Randall Taylor joined together earlier today to address the ongoing protest this afternoon. Yeah, the mayor saying that he is uh, committed to 
uh, change on these major justice issues that are at the heart of these protests, like community policing and transparency and accountability. But again, as we said, uh, he, he's calling for an end to the vandalism and to any violence during these protests, calling it unacceptable. We'll keep watching these live pictures, but briefly, here's what the mayor said earlier. But there is no path forward that relies on violence and lawlessness as a vehicle for change. I will not deny your aim. Okay, that was Mayor Joe Hogsett there uh, in, in that statement earlier. You can see uh, a number of police officers now, Lindsay, cruising past that fire uh, to another location nearby. Again, this is on Pennsylvania, just north of Bankers Life Fieldhouse, where we're watching these live pictures right by Pennsylvania and Washington. Mm -hmm. And it looks like right now we are looking at two different um, fires, one in the middle and one there off to the left of your screen, as you can see, as you, as you take another look down there. I and mean, that may be tear gas that's yeah. being fired there. Right, and that's just on the other side right of the block Right by Pennsylvania there. and Market. Right, and I think that was the Huntington Bank, perhaps, that the windows yeah. were smashed out earlier. Um, and in that press conference earlier, Chief Taylor also echoing the message from the mayor saying, violence is not the answer. We have heard that over and over all day long, and even last night into this morning, they have echoed that message over and over. Here's the chief. Our first responsibility is always to keep our residents safe. And we have a responsibility to intervene in actions of individuals threaten our city. We swear an oath to do just that. So the mayor, uh, again, as we've been saying, asked for these protests to end at 7 p.m. tonight, saying that anyone who, who stayed after the original 4 p.m. organized protest and engaged in any illegal or criminal activity would be subject to arrest. And again, Lindsay, we have heard uh, reports of arrests tonight. Russ McQuaid uh, right there at that location uh, where police uh, ha have been uh, involved tonight uh, dealing with this fire now, this uh, dumpster that is uh, on fire on Pennsylvania Street and also uh, what appeared to have been more tear gas being fired there at Pennsylvania and Market. And we do know last night there were 27 people arrested and we do know IMPD has made some arrests tonight. Not sure on the amount, but we do know some people were taken into custody. And Governor Holcomb issued a statement today in response to all the protests throughout the state. He says he has asked the Indiana State Police to support local communities and to open up resources. He says in the days ahead, peaceful assembly and clear voices will be important if we are to make progress. Violence and vandalism will set us back in our shared desire to resolve differences. Let us again, each of us, be part of the solution. As we continue to watch these uh, live pictures tonight, uh, a lot of statements coming in. The governor right there. We also uh, recently, just within the last hour, also got a statement from the Indianapolis chapter of the ND NAACP. Uh, as these protests continue tonight, they are urging calm. I'll read from some of that. Crystal Ratcliffe, the president of the Greater Indianapolis uh, branch, just issued a statement saying uh, the local NAACP, like the entire nation, uh, is in shock after the senseless death of George Floyd because of the actions of Minneapolis police officers. And we share uh, their wishes to hold the officers accountable. But they say some of the actions that have occurred Friday night in Indianapolis and again tonight to show solidarity with Minneapolis have been uh, disheartening. Watching these live pictures, you see uh, more people there on the scene. You see that dumpster fire there uh, at Market and Pennsylvania right now. I understand Aaron Cantrell is is on with us as well. Aaron, are, you're a couple blocks away from where that fire is burning. Am I correct? Uh, what are you seeing at your location? Well, I'm currently at Meridian in Washington. It looks like a pretty big police presence down by the Circle Center, Center Mall area. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly is going down here, but there was a huge activity earlier on Pennsylvania. I think you guys were talking about it earlier where police put throughout some tear gas and protesters went running down the road. But it seems like everyone has moved to other parts of downtown and looks like you can see there in the distance, there's some sort of police activity going on down there. Not sure exactly what is happening, but there are still a lot of people down here, people running around, rubbing their eyes, trying to get their eyes clear of that tear gas. There's also still a lot of traffic. I know you probably are having a little more difficult time hearing me, especially with the music coming through, but people are still out here. Uh, haven't seen too much vandalism like we did earlier when they busted out the window of that bank here downtown. Also vandalized the vending machine. But right now, again, 
still a lot of traffic, a lot of protesters. They have moved from this area of Washington and Meridian and have dispersed to other places. But we will continue to walk around and see exactly what's going on. But for now, I'm going to send it back to you all in the studio. Okay, Aaron, thanks. Be careful out there. Uh, I understand we do have Russ McQuaid now as well, who's right near the scene of that fire. Russ, what are you seeing there? All right, this is Russ McQuaid, and I am live on South Pennsylvania Street, just south of Marcus Street. And as my photographer Corbin pans over, you can see this is literally a dumpster fire in the middle of southbound Alabama, in the middle of southbound Pennsylvania Street this evening. When we were with you at the top of the show, we showed you as IMPD was moving westbound on Market Street towards the crowd that had massed there at the corner of Pennsylvania Market. It ran south. It laid dumpsters all across the middle of the street, set fire to those dumpsters. IMPD just came in minutes ago, throwing more tear gas, drove the crowd up and around the corner, I believe, so I've been told by sources, back towards Circle Center Mall, where there had been yet another break-in tonight after the place was boarded up, and the crowd there was very menacing towards officers, trying to keep them from making, trying to keep them from, trying to keep them from doing it. So there you have the situation here. We'll bring it back to you later. Okay, uh, intensifying there, Russ. Be careful. Um, we appreciate it, certainly. Uh, to all our crews, we thank you for your hard work out there. Be safe. Um, it's a situation, Lindsay, that obviously continues to unfold here hour by hour, one uh, that has really escalated over the last hour, hour and 20 minutes uh, after several hours of peaceful protest earlier today. Right, it was from four until seven, yeah. and then I would say just around that nine o'clock hour hit, and that's when we started getting the reports of tear gas. Yeah. And, things being thrown at officers and that's really when it, the situation yeah. escalated. All right, we are going to continue to follow this situation uh, downtown here throughout the night with our live crews. We're going to give them uh, a moment to gather their bearings and see what's happening. We also do want to check on our weather tonight as well while we have a moment. Well, it was certainly a beautiful afternoon. We had temperatures that were much more comfortable than we've been pretty much all week long. Temperatures in the low 70s this afternoon, lots of sunshine. And if you like the weather today, I can tell you you're going to like it again tomorrow because we're pretty much rinse and repeat. We're going to finish off the month of May and the weekend on a very pleasant note. This is the view on Eddie's northwest side. We are dry and live guardian radar is clear. We're not looking at anything that's going to be moving in tonight. Nothing that's moving in tomorrow really for the next few days. We have one day left in the month of May and this is what we consider to be a transitional month. The warmest we've ever been has been 96 degrees. That was back in 1895 and in 1911 and the coldest we've ever been well, that was actually 27 degrees, and that was just a couple weekends ago. So you can see we can have some big swings in the month of May. And this May, we've certainly had those swings, not quite as dramatic, but the largest temperature swing we've had was about 60 degrees since 1911. Well, there are those high temperatures today. We got into the mid-70s, 73 in Indianapolis, 76 in Shelbyville. And currently right now we're sitting at 67 degrees with those winds light out of the northeast right around 3 miles an hour. So now we're sitting at temperatures for most of us low to mid-60s. It's still comfortable out there. The humidity has been swept away. And we'll see it come back, but we'll wait a few days for it. And I really think that this is a nice, refreshing break. Now as we head into early tomorrow morning, we'll see temperatures on the cooler side will drop down into the low and mid 50s. A few of us could see some upper 40s. And as I said, it's pretty much going to be a repeat of what we had today. Temperatures rising back towards 70 degrees. We could be a few degrees cooler as we'll have those winds shifting out of the northeast, but lots of sunshine as we head from morning throughout the afternoon. It's going to be another nice, comfortable day, but with all that sunshine, just another reminder that that UV index, it's going to be high once again. It's still going to be at an eight, meaning you can get a sunburn in about 15 minutes if you don't have any protection on your skin. We are not keeping this mild pattern around for very long. It'll last a few more days, and then we're going to start seeing those winds shifting back out of the southwest as we head into early next week. A warm front lifts north Monday night into Tuesday, and that's going to bump temperatures and the humidity up really quickly. So we'll see those dew point temperatures start to rise as we get towards Tuesday back above that uncomfortable level. We say anything above 60 starts to feel uncomfortable and certainly by Wednesday we will be well above that and notice we'll stay with those higher dew point temperatures, meaning there will be more moisture in the air as we finish off the rest of the week. 
We stay dry for the next few days too. We aren't looking at rain moving in until we get into Wednesday, some showers and thunderstorms, but even then these don't look to come until we get into the afternoon and evening. So still a good bit of dry time for the first part of the day and then we'll have some showers and thunderstorms around on Thursday, but again, not a washout. Temperatures tonight dropping down into the lower 50s and look at your seven day forecast. We do have some temperature swings in it. We keep those 70s around just for tomorrow and into Monday as we rise to 74 by two. Tuesday, we start to bring back that warmth back into the mid 80s. We'll start to see that humidity rising as well, and we'll start to feel closer to 90 with that heat index. As we get into Wednesday, we keep that summer like feel around as we get through the weekend. And as we head into early next week, we could be seeing our first 90 degree, but stay tuned. We'll bring you more details on that as we get closer. All right. Thanks so much, Krista. And protests continuing right now in Indianapolis. This is another live look. Of course, we will keep giving you the updates on this developing situation happening right now in downtown Indy as soon as we come back. Yeah, the city county building there, police standing guard right now. We'll have the very latest as we check in with our live crews next. I know it's not easy, but it's going to be okay. We're ready for this to be over and ready for a haircut too. But the Hoosier spirit will never change. Thank you to all the men and women on the front lines. Nurses, our doctors. All of those that are out there working in senior care. We are here for you. We are here for you. Stay positive, stay safe. Don't forget to smile. When you're ready, we'll be here. And we will all be back together soon. From our family to yours, we've got this. Remember, we're all in this together. Busy, busy. That's life for you. Stay on for all of it with the know-how you need right now. Stop by Batteries Plus Bulbs and save on Duracell Ultra, boat, RV, motorcycle, and lawn and garden batteries. Or visit BatteriesPlus.com. Ascension St. Vincent is a leader for heart care. From complex procedures to routine screenings, our cardiologists care for hearts all over the region using the latest best practices and cutting-edge technology. Our care teams listen to you and deliver the heart care that's right for you, closer to home, making Ascension St. Vincent your choice for your regular heart care and your most urgent cardiac emergencies. Ask your doctor about a screening or find a local cardiologist at ascension.org slash stvincentheart. The open road, the wind in your hair, the feeling of freedom that drives us to go out and discover. At Chevy, we're committed to getting you there with confidence and peace of mind. If you need a new Chevy, interest-free APR financing for 84 months on many of our most popular models. You may even shop online and take delivery at home where available. And when you do, your Chevy Clean dealers commit to using enhanced vehicle cleaning measures with CDC-approved cleansers, so you can find new roads with confidence. Thanks for sharing your DIY haircuts. Thanks for sharing your savage moves, and especially your awkward ones. Thanks for sharing your cute kids and your adorable pets. Now it's our turn to share with the GEICO Give Back, a 15% credit on car and motorcycle policies for both current and new customers. And because we're committed for the long haul, the credit lasts your full policy term. So thanks again. One good share deserves another. I'm Beth Henderson. I am not a career politician. I'm a pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, conservative Republican. I was born in the USA, and I'm running for Congress. In these tough times, we need a leader in Congress. As a trusted nurse and successful businesswoman, Beth Henderson is endorsed by U.S. Senator Mike Braun and stands with our President Donald Trump. With your support, we'll reign in the liberal socialists in D.C. and achieve better days. I'm Beth Henderson, and Elsa and I approve this message. See major local news in a whole new way with the power of Sky 59. Sky 59 is powered by Fiesel Windows Roofing and Home Exteriors. Okay, welcome back. Just about 10.30 now as we continue our live breaking coverage of the protests tonight in downtown Indianapolis that continue to escalate here within the last 90 minutes. We want to check in right now with Fox 59's Brett Cass. Brett, where are you and what are you seeing right now? Yeah, Lindsay, we are in front of the uh, city count county building here. As you can see, uh, IMPD officers uh, lined up the front here, the IMPD headquarters right here. Uh, they are blocking off uh, the entrances here. We had seen uh, quite a few police cars lined up, some officers also in riot gear. They just uh, went down uh, Market Street here uh, towards Monument Circle. So uh, we are, again, we've kind of been walking um, 
we hear a lot of noise coming from that downtown area uh, closer to Monument Circle, closer to Circle Center Mall. Uh, so we have been slowly making our way down there. And at each corner, you find uh, some smaller groups here and there. Uh, they start to spread out pretty quickly after, I'd say, five or so minutes. But we, uh, if you see, there's actually some horse uh, cops right there, uh, some officers on horses blocking uh, Market Street, heading towards the city county building here. And IMPD uh, definitely here in full force protecting uh, their building here tonight. But but so far, as, as far as protesters in the area, uh, we have not seen much congregation uh, in this area. It appears from uh, what we have heard that it sounds like all the sounds are coming more from that circle center, uh, center of the city kind of area towards uh, the monument. So we're going to try to make our way down there. But again, uh, you know, turning corners, you kind of get a whiff of tear gas. Uh, and, and then there's different groups there. So we are slowly uh, making our way towards there to try to figure out uh, what is going on. I know you're a couple blocks away from where you were last night, um, but from what you've seen uh, in your travels tonight, how does it compare to what you saw uh, on Friday night last night in downtown Indy? Well, Dan, I'm looking at uh, my watch here. It's about 1030. So I'd say about 1030 last night. It was uh, pretty, pretty tame at that at that point. It really didn't start to escalate until I'd say around uh, around the 11 o'clock area where that's when IMPD had uh, had released that first tear gas into the crowd. So I guess compared to last night, um, it is definitely more sporadic. Last night, there was an organized protest uh, marching down the street at this time. Um, we have not seen that. We've been on kind of the outskirts, though. So uh, we are slowly trying to make our way towards there. So uh, that is what we uh, are seeing and we're going to continue to try to uh, make our way back down there. All right, Brett, thank you so much. Uh, we careful. appreciate that. Yeah, be careful out there. Uh, we're watching on the right side of your screen those dumpster fires uh, continuing to burn on Pennsylvania right now as police continue to stand by in that area. Uh, as the situation continues to escalate tonight, Lindsay. And that is near where Fox 59's Russ McQuaid is. I think we want to check in with him right now. Can you hear us, Russ? Are we starting all over? Russ? And we're back here on uh, East Washington Street uh, as we're approaching uh, just about the corner of Meridian and Washington as the crowd still mill around. We had just heard tear gas pitched as I watched IMPD head up Monument Circle from uh, the south uh, spoke of Meridian Street. My photographer and I, Corbin, well, I'd have been tear gas probably five or six times tonight. I just spoke with a crew. That would be Aaron Cantrell and Joe Lynch. They are on their way over to Kilroy's with a report of a dumpster fire there. If you were with us about 15 minutes ago, you saw a dumpster fire. Literally, this has turned into a dumpster fire. And that was on South Pennsylvania at Washington Street. This crowd at about 9 o'clock continued to walk around and chant until it had gone to the city county building, broken a window there. The uh, sheriff's deputies were inside standing off. You can hear uh, probably explosions in the distance there. Then they moved over to Whole Foods at about 9 p.m. and that's when IMP decided it had had enough. Uh, the crowd was becoming more boisterous. IMPD mindful of its situation last night where the crowd more or less uh, took over before IMPD could contain it, began throwing tear gas we saw several arrests over there, tear gas thrown in the vicinity of the Marion County Prosecutor's Office. Then that crowd uh, attempted to stand off with the police at the corner of Pennsylvania and Market Street, just the other side of uh, Monument Circle. IMPD moved on it, and as you look at that intersection there, it would appear that uh, the protesters are moving road barriers out into the middle of Washington Street. This is a cat and mouse game. The crowd moves, IMPD moves with it. And as I heard one officer say, they are very good with their tactics, and all they can do is IMPD responds, tries to open up the intersection, breaks up the crowd, moves it along. There have been uh, some uh, burglary situations and some vandalism and some broken windows out tonight, not to the degree we saw yesterday, simply because a lot of these windows are already boarded up. We will be with you on this story all night long as it continues to develop, and you can hear some of the noise going on down in the street. Live in downtown Indianapolis, Russ McQuaid, Fox 59 News. Yeah, so as Russ was describing right there, what you're seeing is protesters actually moving those barriers uh, to block off the street right by uh, Chipotle there at Meridian and Washington. This car uh, getting around some of those uh, barriers that the protesters had put in place. Uh, but again, it, it appears as if some of these demonstrators are now taking it upon themselves uh, to find uh, some structures, barriers, trash cans, and other items uh, to block the road there themselves. Moving several of them. Now, we do want to check in with Aaron Cantrell. Aaron, can you hear us? Where are you? What are you seeing right now? 
Well, Lindsay and Dan, I'm currently here on Pennsylvania, right next to where Five Guys is downtown, and actually two dumpsters are on fire. You can see protesters there in the distance as well. Now, they just started one of the fires there on the left moments ago, but we've also seen several police officers down here going to different parts of downtown, trying to get a hold a handle on all the situations. It's a bizarre sight to see in downtown Indy. It's not what you're used to seeing when you come down here to downtown Indianapolis, but you can see those fires are drawing more crowds over there. And where we're at right now, we actually do not see any police activity. We've seen several police officers pass through going to other scenes, but there is no actual police activity where we're at. So these protesters are watching these dumpsters burn at the moment. We do know there was some activity going on down at Kilroy's as well. And we've seen a lot of people just driving recklessly as well, not keeping an eye out for pedestrians. So th these people will continue to watch these uh, fires burn. But we're going to stay out here and continue to follow this. And we're just going to keep moving around here in downtown and see what all is going on. But I'm going to send it right back to you all in the studio. Yeah. And it looks as if Brett Cast uh, has now moved to the other side uh, of that scene uh, where that dumpster fire is burning. He's looking uh, the other direction uh, down the street towards those two uh, dumpster fires right now. And he's very near that Huntington Bank location, Lindsay, that we've been yep. talking about that uh, suffered some vandalism earlier. Brett, uh, can you hear me right now down the street from uh, that dumpster fire? What are you seeing? So uh, are, on the are north we taking? There? We're, we're here. Yeah, we're, we're live here. Uh, we're looking. Did you see this fire? Um, is right in front of the winter circle right downtown. If you can see this right here, I think Aaron had been here earlier. Uh, looks like people are retreating. There might be something happening here, so we're probably going to get ready to retreat. Uh, we're standing here next to uh, Dick's Bodacious Barbecue. You can see the, the broken glass shattered at our, at our feet right here, uh, and, and some tables been turned. Uh, this window is completely shattered, um, but, but this fire in the street here, people are kind of dispersing. Uh, I have not seen um, um, any tear gas being deployed, any activity from that. Uh, but as you can see, that, that's the fire um, growing pretty large as people are kind of, uh, of spreading back here. Uh, I, and I see even more, it looks like, uh, glass shattered on some businesses here. Uh, it looks like that is still the barbecue business. The door is completely shattered, um, so I, I can't tell if anyone had actually gotten uh, inside there. But as you see, a, a very uh, powerful scene right here. I mean, this is a, a very... I mean, you see the smoke billowing right there in that fire. Uh, some people standing on top of what, what looks like might be a car uh, right there. And, and that smoke is really starting to billow in the air. Uh, so we may, uh, we may start stepping back here in a second. But, but so far, I've not seen uh, IMPD officers in this spot um, really deploying tear gas, doing anything. I, I have not seen um, any officers standing uh, here on this street right now. I, I was just going to ask you about the police presence there, Brett. Uh, n no officers there from what you can tell in that area where that dumpster fire is burning on Pennsylvania in, in that general vicinity? Yeah, so, yeah, we're on Pennsylvania. I mean, the, the intersection, Pennsylvania is still open. People are having to turn around. I'm looking if you can actually, I don't know if you can see some of the cars still lining down Pennsylvania. There's, it looks like there's traffic coming downtown. Everyone's being uh, moved that way. Uh, there's actually is a DPW truck uh, kind of blocking people away from the monument. Uh, if we can actually, here, if we can just step down briefly right here, um, we can see that there is a, uh, there, there's a DPW truck that is uh, uh, blocking off this intersection that, that leads to the monument. Um, so, so that is kind of blocking people, sending people this way. You see uh, the, the, the uh, uh, cones, I guess, sending people that way as well, uh, kind of blocking off this scene on Pennsylvania. But as far as police, uh, no, we have not seen any uh, from where we're standing right here, no. Scary stuff. All right, thanks yeah. a lot, Brett. We want to check in now. Yep, we can see you right here. Hey, Aaron, where are you? What are you seeing? Yeah, Lindsay, we're still here on uh, Pennsylvania, and uh, people aren't too happy with the media right now. Uh, so we're backing away right now, but you can see that crowd over there uh, with uh, another affiliate right now. Um, we did just witness some people getting a little angry because we are out here. Also, those dumpster dumpsters are still on fire, and we did see some of the protesters break the glass of the five guys here as well. Um, but people are very upset hey, down here. It is, man. Hey, but uh, we will continue to stay out here, but we're going to try to get ourselves in a little bit of a safer distance to bring you a little better report. But I'm going to send it back to you in the studio. Yeah, Aaron, Good be idea. careful. Be careful yes. out there. Uh, Beershell Edmay, I, I believe, is with us now as well out in the newsroom. Um,
as we continue to watch some of these live pictures uh, from downtown Indianapolis. Uh, she's going to be joining us uh, here momentarily uh, as well to talk about uh, the situation downtown, what we've been seeing out there today. Lindsay, uh, the situation obviously just uh, continuing to escalate. Also seeing some reports on social media right now, uh, potentially of a situation near the state house. I don't think we have anyone uh, in that particular area right now, but seeing some reports of uh, heavy police activity there by Capitol. We saw that last night as well right. with a number of protesters gathered uh, by the state Capitol uh, tonight, around last night, around this same time, just before 11 o'clock, as we continue to watch these live pictures now of that dumpster fire uh, on Pennsylvania near the Steak and Shake. Uh, near a number of restaurants, five guys, five and, guys. and and else uh, elsewhere that uh, that suffered uh, some vandalism again tonight. They said, um, I think Brett just said the five guys window was shattered and we know at least 30 businesses had damage to their businesses overnight and into early this morning and that was 30 last night. Who knows how many tonight? Oh, uh, we saw all day long business owners were boarding up their doors and their yeah. windows with plywood and it almost looked as if it was a place in the south that was bracing for a hurricane. Right, Obviously right. just putting up those boards to do whatever they could to protect their businesses. I mean, from four to seven, like I said, we had peaceful protests and we all in the news were, were kind of hoping, okay, seven o'clock, we, we just wanted everyone to go home and end it and have it remain peaceful. Well, and even up till nine o'clock, yeah. really things uh, had been fairly peaceful. Um, you, you, you had the crowd descend on the city county building uh, around that time. Uh, that is also when police uh, say that they started to have some projectiles tossed at them by a small group of protesters, uh, which then led to tear gas being fired uh, at the Whole Foods right there near the CCB. And, and that seems to be when things turned right there at nightfall tonight around 9 o'clock this evening. Uh, Birchelle is with us now uh, as well. Uh, you saw some of the events earlier today downtown. It, it had been a large but peaceful protest really throughout the day. I mean, it is truly night and day yeah. seeing the difference here in these live pictures and keep in mind the timeline that you all are walking through nine o'clock is when it started to get yeah. a bit darker out there. And mm -hmm. despite the fact that the mayor and the chief had called for seven o'clock to be that ending point for people to go home and come back if they needed to tomorrow mm -hmm. or the next few days in protest, that has not happened. We've seen the crowds continue to protest out in downtown and earlier in the day when it was more so peaceful, you heard people talking about just the deep rooted frustration and yeah. anger they have not just about this George Floyd case, but for cases that have happened even here. Uh, a lot at of local home. cases yeah. that have been right. referenced. And uh, year by protesters. We've yeah. talked a lot about, you know, Dre Jean Reed, Reed yeah. which was just three weeks ago. So that pain and that wound is still very much fresh right. for a lot of people and wanting to have that conversation with authorities here in our community with IMPD, but also having that mistrust and also realizing too that we are what two years removed from the Aaron Bailey case That's and right. mm -hmm. and that uh, kind of justification in a sense from the citizens board and, and learning what was happening or the review board I should say and learning right. what happened in the outcome there. So people have a lot of frustration and a lot of pain and we're seeing that now playing out in the communities across our cities and nation and here in Indianapolis is no exception. Uh, There's a lot of buildup. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. It, it's obviously just be beyond er the, the entire conversation here about about public safety and uh, and social justice. It's an incredibly difficult time in our country right now. Right. So many people out of work. You've mm -hmm. had 100,000 people uh, killed by the coronavirus and not just here in Indianapolis tonight, but in cities across the country. Large groups of people uh, are protesting tonight uh, amidst a very difficult situation. Yeah. As we watch these live pictures, it looks as if um, something's just, happened there at that dumpster. I don't know if more tear gas has been fired. Brett, what's, uh, Brett's, what's Brett going on there? Brett is moving away He's from moving the scene away. right now. Yeah, us? absolutely. It's a lot of running right it now. It is just a lot of running. Uh, yeah, something obviously is going on right there. You can see people sprinting away from whatever that scene is. It is unreal to see our city like this right now. And again, keep in mind, we didn't see people running from downtown before. We saw yeah. people walking together arm in arm, having a dialogue about what they feel is at the center of this conversation right now nationwide. But you're seeing some, it looks like someone on a scooter there. And that also was a big point, talking point for authorities earlier yeah. in the day, saying that, you know, we saw a lot of scooters go through a lot of business windows right. mm -hmm. overnight. That's why a lot of boarded up. Right, trash yeah. cans, whatever people could pick. And they were hoping to find different places and ways to kind of remove that from the downtown area. Okay, I think we have Brett now. As you uh, safely get away from that scene, can you tell us what, what was going on there, Brett? Tear gas? Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, we can so hear So we you. just had some of that tear gas was, was going off at that 
of that, uh, that fire. So we are backing up now. Uh, this is uh, the intersection of Pennsylvania Market, uh, where we had been. We just saw more people break some glass at uh, Dick's Bodacious Barbecue. So we are now walking, uh, retreating from where we had been. That was that fire you saw uh, that was in the street. We're just trying to get our distance to make sure um, you know, that tear gas doesn't get the crowd was kind of spreading out. Uh, we hear a lot of sirens because here's the thing, too. Behind us on Pennsylvania is a line of cars. I mean, there are there is a massive line of cars that is is, is either backed up here, um, here at the intersection, which is now obviously uh, being blocked by many people, but obviously the fire behind it was, was blocking this intersection as well. So um, we're still spreading out. I have not felt any of that tear gas that we thought had been deployed there. So, uh, so that is kind of the situation. Uh, we pulled back a little bit from that fire. Not sure if something in the fire uh, is what may have made that noise, but it did disperse the crowd quite a bit. That's kind of what it looked like, Brett. It, it looked as if, you know, whether it was tear gas or something uh, incendiary within that dumpster fire that may have burst, uh, something it, it looked like took place there near that dumpster. Um, wow. wow, difficult images here. I, I believe Aaron's on the other side of that uh, dumpster fire now. Aaron, where are you? Aaron, can you hear us? Yeah, so uh, Dan and Lindsay, I'm still near Washington Street. Um, I'm actually on the other side of where Brett is, and uh, we've seen people running away as officers throw out that tear gas. We've also I've seen someone carrying a sledgehammer to bust out the windows of these businesses. I've heard several glasses cracking, cracking. You can actually look right here to my left behind me at the first financial banking you can see where there's a little damage there where someone tried to break that window as well earlier we were here at four o'clock this afternoon it was a very very peaceful protest you saw people locking arms peacefully walking around downtown and then around 9 30 10 o'clock things took a turn there are some people that are just walking around protesting, but there are a lot of people down here causing a lot of destruction to downtown Indianapolis. And I think you said it earlier, Lindsay, it's a bizarre sight to see our city this way. This is not how you would picture downtown Indianapolis at all. But we're going to continue to stay down here and follow exactly what's going on. But I'm sending it back to the uh, newsroom. Okay. An absolutely unreal scene. Thank you so much, Aaron. Be, be careful out there. And I know we had uh, we checked in with Brett earlier when he was on Mass Ave, and uh, there wasn't a ton of obviously activity. But we know restaurants, even on Mass Ave, they they closed up shop early, and, and even people had reservations, and they said for safety reasons right. they closed down. Some were six o'clock, some were eight o'clock. This and is another dumpster fire we're looking at here. One yeah. that has just been reported. If we can go back to those pictures, this I believe is go. at Maryland and Capitol, right by the Convention Center and the Cultural Trail. Uh, Russ McQuaid is on the scene here at this fire. Um, Russ, what happened? Okay, I, I, I don't think we have Russ right now, but we're looking at these pictures by the, Indiana um, convention. By the convention center. Okay, we do have Russ. Oh, we okay. going live? Yep, go ahead, Russ. Russ? And this is Russ McQuay and I'm outside the Indiana Convention Center. You can see there are flames in the street down here. We would be at the corner of Capitol, and also I would make that to be Maryland. Corbin, if you can follow me around here and walk this way, I'll also take you over here. And this is what they've been worried about, and for the first time, we can see it. Uh, we do have broken glass inside the Convention Center. So this is where the crowd uh, moved down this way. The crowd is split up. It is dispersed. We have heard also uh, reports of fires. Uh, potentially at the front door of the Chamber of Commerce building that would be approximately 300 North Meridian Street. As the cops have pointed out, uh, these people are very good at their tactics. They move quick. It's cat and mouse. The police move on, disperse them. Well, you just heard a couple more pops. I'm guessing that's more tear gas going off uh, so far this evening. And uh, there have been several arrests, and you can see now somebody in that intersection has decided to bring out a uh, fire extinguisher and try to put that fire out. We'll be down here for you live all evening long, just as long as this action continues. And we'll bring you the latest both on the web and on the air. Live in downtown Indianapolis, Russ McQuaid, Fox 59 News. Wow, right. Russ, thank, thank you. you. Hearing more reports of another uh, dumpster fire, perhaps in the Georgia Street area, uh, being reported by Ryan Martin from the Indianapolis Star right now. Guys, uh, certainly a situation that just uh, seems to be uh, escalating tonight uh, ever since about 9 o'clock. Yep.
And you know what? It does echo what we've seen across the nation. Yeah. And this started, yes, Monday night with the death of George Floyd. And we saw a lot of that frustration and anger turn to violence in Minneapolis. And then slowly and surely, people wanted to show solidarity right. with Minneapolis. And for the first time, we somewhat saw that yesterday. And now we, too, are seeing a turn in the demonstrations and the protests as we take a live look here as protesters are in some ways changing the tone of the conversation that happened earlier and today. And more people, it looks like, running from the scene of uh, perhaps some more tear more gas tear canisters gas that have been deployed downtown. Um, uh, not far from that, or is this is this Indianapolis still, right? I know that uh, graphic on the screen says Seattle, but this is downtown Indianapolis. No, that is, yeah. right? yes. Yeah. I um, am almost certain it is. And last night, I know yeah. we had the CVS, um, the CVS pharmacy that was lit on fire. I feel like there are way more fires tonight uh, than we did yesterday and obviously more businesses and we're seeing businesses having their windows that shattered too. right there too that's yes. sitting on the corner mm -hmm. also right. was a, a victim of some of the vandalization as well i think right now we have aaron who's live and ready to tell us a bit more about what he's seeing on the ground there aaron can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, Bear Shell. We're at Meridian in Washington Street. I don't know if you just saw it, but we just saw several police um, patrol cars just leave Monument Circle and head again back towards Circle Center Mall. They were uh, surrounding the Monument Circle, protecting it, but then they left. Um, I've uh, seen people still bust out the windows of several businesses down here, uh, but there are several people who are participating in the vandalism. They're still just protesting, but there is a lot of destruction going on um, right now. Uh, but right now, it seems things are peaceful right now, but we'll continue to stay out here. Um, and we have seen a lot more police activity in this area. I know earlier I had reported there wasn't much, but it seems like police have made their way down here. Uh, but we're going to send it back to you all in the studio and uh, just keep an eye out out here. Russ kind of described it um, as, uh, as a cat and mouse game, for lack of a better term, where you have protesters and police moving um, one after another to different parts of the city, to different parts of downtown Indy. And again, we see that uh, playing out where protesters uh, move from one area to another um, and, and then yeah. police tactically uh, obviously then have to make decisions on, on whether to retreat. Um, and now they are advancing again here on this uh, Meridian and Washington area and more tear gas being fired. Aaron, you, you may want to get out of there. Get, yeah, get out, get out of that area, guys. I think I just saw some tear right, gas yeah. canisters right underneath you. There you go anticipated we might get to this moment with milk and jugs of water that were kind of spread throughout downtown too, despite the fact again that the people who originally organized the four o'clock protests had called for peace, had called for actions that don't look like what we're seeing right now. Those organizers said it over and over. They said, we don't want to set fires. We don't want to flip over cars. We don't want to do anything like that. They said that over and over. They wanted a peaceful protest. And that's exactly how this started, you guys, from four to seven, and everything was very peaceful. And those organizers were very vocal about it and saying, hey, this isn't what we wanted. This wasn't the scene that we wanted to see. It's surprising to me that, uh, and this is, this, this is the video from earlier when tear gas was first deployed tonight uh, by Whole Foods, uh, not too far from the CCB. Uh, that was the first use tonight of tear gas, from what we understand, right after uh, the group of protesters had uh, had gathered out in front of the city county building. There had been some minor damage to a window. IMPD says at, at some point right before this, uh, they had some projectiles uh, launched their direction, and that's what uh, caused them to have to use tear gas at this scene. But uh, guys, back to, you know, as we were watching some of those live pictures earlier, um, it, it's striking to me as tear gas is being fired down Washington Street that there's traffic. Yeah. coming up Meridian to the mm -hmm. corner of Meridian and Washington. I'm surprised maybe that uh, more traffic around the perimeter of downtown hasn't been shut down as, as this continues to happen. Tonight. Well, you know, when I was earlier down there, where you saw somewhat of a perimeter with officers in their cars was more so around Monument Circle, which at yeah. one point was the center of the demonstrations today. But you're right. I mean, we've seen protesters walking through uh, ongoing now, traffic it, it right now. Like it looks like someone is being arrested. Wow. We're seeing what looks like possible punches and restraints being thrown here to a demonstrator or someone who is being apprehended on the ground. Sparks are flying, mm. tear gas is being deployed. This is a different temperature tonight. Yes, this is absolutely difficult to watch. Is. This is very hard to watch. And we know that IMPD has said that they have made oh arrests and this is clearly another arrest. Five minutes till 11 o'clock in our city and it is tough. It is tough to watch what we are seeing in downtown Indianapolis tonight as police 
uh, try to um, try to maintain uh, control of this situation, but obviously a situation that um, continues to escalate and difficult to watch here as uh, someone is detained and struck by police and now uh, dragged away there in handcuffs tonight. Now on his feet. Um, fires, as we've seen in other locations, tear gas uh, being deployed and uh, a situation that uh, has certainly escalated just in the last two hours after uh, several hours of peaceful demonstration today with protesters gathered uh, to demonstrate against uh, the actions of Minneapolis police in the death of George Floyd. It was right around that nine o'clock hour is when we saw this all kind of escalate and then the fire started and we heard the tear gas being deployed and that nine o'clock hour I feel like is when it really did escalate from a peaceful protest and to what we have now. These pictures are right near one of the Circle Center Mall parking garages. Uh, you can see some of the haze uh, off in the distance there. But again, I, I, I'm really struck by the fact that you still have a lot of traffic um, and hopefully a lot of people getting out of downtown Indy um, at this point. Uh, people who may have been out to dinner or, or out at some of the uh, demonstrations, some of the peaceful demonstrations earlier. Um, and and you, you see some barricades set up in some places. But they're but not all across the street. They're, they're not all across right. the street. It's, it's just a difficult situation to right. uh, to control traffic when, you know, maybe there's a barricade in front of you one way, but but if you were to turn the other way, you have tear gas in the street, you gotta, you got to go where you can go. And, and obviously this is a situation that is, is difficult for anyone trying to get through downtown on foot or in car. And you, we've seen on, uh, on our live broadcast, we've seen protesters moving those barricades too and moving cones. So he had is kind of a hard situation. Which way are you going? I mean, and it's hard to see. Is that smoke? Is that tear gas? You know, it's, it's just a, a difficult situation. So this is right on the corner there by the Steak and Shake and the Hyatt. Uh, we're looking at more live pictures now of uh, of police and uh, again we just watched uh, police detain someone and now again uh, someone else it looks like yep. taken into police custody here and handcuffed in downtown Indy tonight. And it's happening a bit quicker than what we saw yeah. yesterday. I mean we knew there was a total of 27 arrests that were made yesterday when we first saw protests happening but now here you see another person being detained possibly even arrested as these demonstrations turn take a turn and it's worth noting too the center of all of this does start with George Floyd in Minneapolis, and it yeah. continues here at home with several different cases, including Dre John Reed, as people are hoping to have their voices heard and talk about some injustice, injustices they feel are happening, not just in Minneapolis, not just in other communities that aren't away from us, but here at home yeah. in Indianapolis and the surrounding community. It is a nationwide uh, cry for justice uh, that we are hearing. Uh, related to the George Floyd case, and as Beershell said, uh, related to other cases that have happened here in Indiana and uh, other incidents uh, elsewhere around the country as we see this man being uh, arrested and taken away now uh, by police into uh, the squad car here. We're coming up on 11 o'clock and coming up on uh, a short break, but our coverage will continue here on Fox 59 News. Coming up uh, at the top of the hour at 11 o'clock, we'll continue our live coverage with our crews uh, scattered throughout downtown Indy, trying to uh, bring us safely uh, the very latest on what is happening there tonight on guys what has been a very very difficult night and a very difficult thing to see in our city here this evening but we certainly want to make sure that we walk it through every single moment yep. that's happening overnight here with you we'll be back in just a few moments Across the country, it's America's favorite jackpot game. Get ready, everybody. This is Powerball. Good evening, America. I'm Sam Arlen. Tonight, we have an estimated jackpot for you. It's worth $127.3 million. I hope you have your Powerball tickets. Good luck. Let's see how you did tonight. First number down, 
32 to lead us off. And right after that, we have 13. Here's John Poole from Missouri. John won $50,000 playing Powerball. Next number down is 58. That's followed by 41. And we're going to wind it up for you tonight. Good luck with the number 60. Now for your winning Powerball number. It is 14 tonight, and that power play multiplier is 2. Welcome to tonight's Hoosier Lottery Daily 3 and Daily 4 Drawings. I'm Erin Becker. For over 30 years, the Hoosier Lottery has contributed over $887 million to the Teachers Retirement Fund. Visit HoosierLottery.com for details. Now good luck and let's play Daily 3. Tonight's first number is 5 followed by 5 and finally 8. Those winning numbers are 5, 5, 8. Now let's play Daily 4. Tonight's first number is 8 followed by 9. Your third number is 0. And finally, 0. Those winning numbers are 8900, zero, zero, and your Super Bowl is 6. Thanks for playing, Indiana. Okay, welcome back to Fox 59 News as we continue our breaking news coverage tonight. Live pictures from downtown Indianapolis where you can see police are again on the move tonight uh, right past the Qdoba there, uh, right there at, on Monument Circle, right yep. on the south side of the circle tonight. As protests continue, things have escalated in the last two hours as we've watched uh, people be arrested, tear gas be deployed, and the situation uh, continue to devolve tonight. Aaron Cantrell uh, standing by live. Aaron, what are you seeing right now? What's happening? Well, Dan and Lindsay, I can tell you actually here behind me, this police activity is after actually they arrested someone earlier. They went to put him into the squad car and at some point he got released and he started taking off. So now police are again trying to detain him. Looks like more officers are heading this way. Not exactly sure what's going on at top of the monument, but something is going on up there and more police keep showing up here. But again, what started this was someone was being arrested and then that person got loose and ran off and then police officer chased down after him. I do not know exactly what's going on, but we've seen two people actually be arrested. One of the people arrested, they were arrested for not staying on the sidewalk and they were in the road, so they took him into custody. But again, right now, we do not know exactly what's happening here on Monument Circle, but there is a heavy police presence and more police officers keep showing up. But people have dispersed all through downtown. There are several scenes going on right now. You can actually see right now. I'm not sure what this gentleman is talking to the officers about at this moment. Looks like he's trying to tell them about something. But as you can see, there is something definitely happening here. But we'll continue to stay on top of this and monitor it. But I'm going to send it back to you in the studio. And some of those officers are, are headed up the steps of the monument. Does it look like they're looking for something or, or someone up there as they as they head up those steps? Yeah, so. So then uh, the person that they initially arrested took off up the stairs, so it looks like there's something going on in that area that may be the person they tried to put in custody earlier, but he ended up running off. So we're not exactly sure what's going on up there, but that may be exactly what's happening up there. Okay. Right. Aaron Cantrell reporting live. Um, so we continue here top of the hour. Dan Spieler back with Birchelle Edmay, Lindsay Eaton, um, following a situation, guys, that uh, Birchelle has uh, continued uh, to escalate here. And, and it's all after several hours of peaceful right. demonstration. Mm -hmm. Things really just in the last couple of hours as have As soon as nightfall, yeah, yeah. we saw that shift uh, between the temperature and just the message that was being said by demonstrators as well. And, you know, throughout the day, we heard from the mayor and the governor. This is video from earlier in the day. We want to show you somewhat of that exact moment when we saw the light switch. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, so <laughs> literally and figuratively as we saw tear gas being deployed into demonstrators who, you know, by this point, it's most likely well after seven o'clock. And that is right. when the mayor had asked for demonstrators to wrap up their protests, to go home and again, allow their voices to be heard, but not get to this point of confrontation with IMPD or to have violence throughout the night or even some of the looting that we saw overnight as well. But you know, when the uh, mayor spoke earlier today too, he made it a point to recognize that these emotions that we've seen throughout the day, that they are justified, that there are deep rooted problems in our community here in Indianapolis that have caused some of the tension that we've seen throughout the day. But what he did also add is that the actions we have seen overnight and perhaps some of what we're seeing right now yeah. is unacceptable. The yes. NAACP echoing that message in a statement just within the last couple hours as well. Lindsay, uh, we, we've seen groups of protesters in, in many different parts of, of downtown Indianapolis tonight, including 
uh, Mass Ave um, uh, earlier, right before uh, right. protesters moved to the CCB. Yes, and I mean, we were used to seeing Mass Ave kind of blocked off with that more of that outdoor seating area, right. you know, and a nice night. Normally that would be busy, and then businesses, restaurants were saying, hey, nope, closing up shop. We saw several restaurants taking in their tables before it even got dark out, right. like not even taking the chances. And we've seen a lot of those businesses, people had reservations and they sent them the alert and said, out of safety reasons, we're not even right. taking chances. And a lot of those businesses on Mass Ave too, that we showed earlier in the 10 o'clock hour had their um, windows and doors boarded up just to protect their businesses. And I know you said earlier, Dan, on the move, and that's kind yeah. of what police are doing now. And we have that big group, like you said, Bierschall, arm in arm with the protests. And then it was one big group and then it just broke off into those smaller groups. And now police literally are on the move with um, tracking yeah. all these small groups of protesters. You know, this is a, a situation as, as we've been talking about throughout the night that is happening in city after city across America. These are live pictures now from Chicago where we have seen more protests tonight. We have seen things escalate uh, throughout the evening. We've also seen uh, video on social media from Brooklyn tonight where some officers actually uh, drove into uh, yes. a group of protesters yes. uh, briefly. And that's what inflames people and yeah. makes them yeah. even more frustrated with that Mm -hmm. communication and the interaction that communities of color, especially African-American men and women are having with authorities when something like, like you're describing in Brooklyn happens and officers do ram into protesters or demonstrators. And I know here in Chicago, we did see reports of um, Chicago PD cars being lit on fire. We saw them being vandalized. We saw um, several different stores that were looted. I know one of the Nike stores, I think I saw a report of That's a Macy's right. right downtown Chicago that um, you just saw people busting in the windows, going and grabbing things and taking off. So this is live pictures of Chicago right now. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what part of town, uh, somewhere near downtown, I think that we're looking at. Um, we, we, as Lindsay mentioned, uh, heard reports of looting uh, at the Nike store along the Magnificent Mile, mm -hmm. uh, some vandalism there and some windows uh, busted out. And we see, uh, I think, some people there in, in the streets, some police cars uh, as well with a heavy police presence in Chicago. Uh, and I believe that is the Magnificent Mile you're mm -hmm. looking at there, actually. And again, back to these live pictures now from Indianapolis, a heavy police presence here as well, IMPD. Uh, sheriff's cruisers there as well on Monument Circle with some barricades set up and arrests that have been made uh, downtown. We've watched a, a couple of arrests yep. play out right in front of our, our cameras here. Aaron, what are you seeing right now? Can you hear it? Uh, Aaron's uh, talking to one of our crews. But let's listen in to hear what he's describing. Not look like more police cars than as you can see going to that area. It looked as if someone was being detained there. We can tell you as of last night from those protests, 27 people were arrested. As you mentioned, Dan, we have seen at least a couple live on air here of people being arrested as well. Ooh. And there you see uh, some uh, what's written there. I mean, it's plain and simple. It yep. says rise up. Mm -hmm. And to speak again to what protesters have been saying throughout the day, you know, I just had a, a mother who reached out to me. This is Shanika Day. Her son, Terrell Day, actually was a center of a conversation here in Indianapolis and nationwide. That was back in 2015, an 18-year-old black man. He was a shoplifting suspect of a Burlington Coat Factory. He later died in being in the back of an ambulance, and several times he had asked for help, saying that he could not breathe. An ambulance, a second ambulance, finally arrived, but it was too late. He died of a heart attack. And as she's watching this, she messaged me and just said, it's so sorry that this keeps happening mm -hmm. and no one is doing anything about it to stop it. My heart hurts so bad to keep hearing and seeing this happening. So, so many different angles yeah. and people There's watching. Sean Reed's name. Reed. Right, Sean on, Reed, another uh, person yeah. just three weeks ago who the city felt may not have gotten the treatment that he deserved, despite the fact that officers have said he shot at the officer, he fleed officers, he was showing that on Facebook Live at points even taunting officers, but a conversation still in this community about why things escalate and perhaps sometimes if race is a part of that. Yeah, that's definitely been um, such a huge uh, part of this conversation on, on a very heavy week, a very difficult week in our country as we watch these images play out uh, amidst the, the ongoing pandemic, of course. I mean, that's something that, um, y you know, we continue to, to watch very closely. You've seen a lot of uh, protesters who are in masks and a lot of people who are uh, gathered downtown tonight uh, amidst this very difficult time where, where so many people uh, have lost their jobs, so many people have lost their lives in the midst of this pandemic, and now the mounting frustration 
uh, over uh, these, these critical social justice issues that have really reached a, a fever pitch here in the last week and a half. Emotions are raw and I mean you can see the it, it, it's a, so much tension and I don't know what that gentleman in the background was yelling about but I mean and then we saw Deshaun Reed's name um, spray painted on that storefront and it's just another reminder of just how raw these emotions are. So you're looking at uh, the corner there uh, just down the street from the State House okay. um, on Illinois and Market Street where uh, the TJ Maxx there uh, uh, has, uh, has has seen a lot of people go by tonight. We again saw Deshaun Reed's name written, uh, spray painted uh, on the front of that uh, of that store. There's our Russ McQuaid. He's uh, standing by. We're going to be uh, checking in with him in a minute as well. And you're looking down the street toward the state capitol, where uh, we do see some more people gathered. And it looks as if police are also um, uh, trying to talk to some people who are uh, perhaps uh, there in the street. Now we see more people running, running. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. away from and. Uh, in some cases toward the state capitol as well. And you assume, I mean, when we saw the crowd earlier running and then we saw the tear gas, so I mean, you assume that's when you see the crowd running from that scene, you, you, you kind of assume here comes the tear gas in we, that picture. We've seen it deployed um, a number Several of times, times tonight. Um, we've, we've seen uh, a couple of arrests play out right in front of our cameras uh, this evening as well. I'm not sure what the situation is, is another down the street here on yeah on market. Um, I, I don't think Russ is able to hear us right now, but it's uh, something we continue to watch. W w where are we headed next? We're uh, going to be checking with some of our reporters here standing by. Uh, Aaron Cantrell is there on Monument Circle. Brett Cast is downtown. Our Russ McQuaid is as well as our crews continue to uh, try to uh, safely from, from the distance they can maintain report on the uh, ongoing events here in downtown Indianapolis tonight. We right. have seen several fires all across downtown Indianapolis and I mean I know we saw one at the five guys and it's hard to keep track of all of them to be honest with you. I mean there were so many all spread across the downtown area. Like we said our crews are out there and they're gathering information and they're trying to do their best and to do it safely. Yeah. Um, obviously the heavy police presence there right outside of the TJ Maxx, which I believe was vandalized last night too. We do want to check in now. I think Aaron Cantrell is ready for um, to give us a live report. Where are you, Aaron? I believe they said you're near the circle. Yeah, Lindsay, I'm actually next to uh, Monument Circle. You can still see this uh, police presence here. What happened to this was that they had someone in custody. He got out of police custody and then they got him back in custody, but he was badly injured, so now he is being taken to the hospital. Um, don't know exactly what happened during that arrest, but at some point during that arrest, this protester was injured, so now he's being taken off, taken off to the hospital. But this is actually the only activity really here on Monument Circle. It seems like the rest of the protesters are just at, at different parts of downtown. But just looking around here, you can see there are still some posters up here from the protest. You can see the monument itself has been vandalized um, with different words on it. Also, a lot of these businesses down here have been spray painted and some of of them boarded up their windows before the protests actually happened. And it looks like actually all the businesses here on Monument Circle are fine. None of the windows were busted out here, but they did get spray paint on them. But a lot of other businesses in downtown, they have been damaged here. You can actually hear a voice recording right now of them saying this uh, the assembly has become unlawful and they are asking people to leave the area immediately. That actually has been playing most of the night, that message right there, but people have not listened. They still continue to stay down here and disrupt, destruct a lot of these businesses down here. But it looks like this police scene here to my left is actually starting to clear up. They took uh, that protester in, uh, in the ambulance to the hospital to get him checked out. But earlier, I actually spoke with one of the IMPD officers, and all he told me was just be careful out here because it is very dangerous. So it looks like they still have a long night ahead of them, but we'll continue to stay out here. I'm going to send it back to you all in the studio. Right, thank you. Can you still hear us, Aaron? Aaron, yes. oh, great. So have you, how have you seen the police presence change and also the protesters? I know earlier in the day when you were covering this, we saw kind of larger groups. So now it seems more scattered, but we're seeing differences here in, in kind of the gathering of both police and protesters. So what has been the change you've noticed? 
Well, Bershell, it's uh, actually a bizarre sight because earlier this afternoon around 4 o'clock, everything was very peaceful. People marched along the streets of downtown, and it was very, very peaceful. Everyone locked hand in hand. There was no one causing any disruption, and there was a huge crowd all standing as one to promote the message and to get justice. But after a while, I would say around 9, 930, things just kind of took a turn for the worse. And the, the groups kind of went in different directions. So I'm not sure if the people who uh, made the, the protests earlier are still out here or these are just people who came later after the fact. So right now it's just individual groups just dispersed throughout downtown Indianapolis and some of them are causing a lot of destruction. So we've seen police officers throughout the city. So at first when it all started happening, police weren't able to get to all the scenes that uh, that were going on. So there was a lot of activity like when those dumpsters were on fire where police there was no one there. Uh, but there was just so much other activity going on in downtown. But eventually the police showed up. They put out their uh, tear gas and people dispersed. Um, also, while we've been out here, we've seen two people arrested. Uh, we know one was arrested for not staying off of the road and not getting on the sidewalk. But it looks like it's still not slowing down anytime soon. Uh, but there are still people out here doing it peacefully. But there's others uh, causing a little destruction as well. Um, so that's what we're seeing out here, Brichelle. Forest downtown, right by Monument Circle, the center of a lot of the demonstrations we've seen throughout the last few hours here. But some of that destruction is happening. We saw what happened overnight with businesses that some of whom were just opening after this right. pandemic being allowed right. to open June 1st for many of our restaurants and, and just, you know, salons and different businesses who are preparing this yeah. weekend to open up for later this week. But now in the center of well as well of this protest being downtown and seeing some of the impacts there too and having to be ha having been shut down for two months it was a long awaited time to finally reopen and obviously with downtown indy being in marion county they had to wait a little bit longer to finally open those businesses aaron was just at the circle and like you said beer shell the circle was one of the places where the peaceful protests were i know they went to um the monument as well as the circle and when it was all peaceful earlier in the day. And it seems, yeah, as if, you know, there was a large group of protesters out earlier today. Yes. It's a smaller group of people, uh, much smaller group of people causing a lot of the problems here right now. And, and it's been very scattered as well as police move in. Uh, we're now looking at several smaller groups uh, that have been scattered to different parts of downtown Indianapolis from what we understand. And I know that was a big worry too as police held their press conference earlier today and talking about one large group and then they had as well as last night those smaller groups breaking off and causing the destruction and the graffiti and the damage to the businesses and whatnot. Yeah, I'm actually looking at um, something Ryan Martin from the Indianapolis Star, our partners at the Star uh, just posted uh, some video. Uh, someone apparently tried to set the first watch restaurant uh, on fire, which is just about a block or two up from uh, this camera location here outside uh, the Hilton. And uh, three people actually then just ran up with a bunch of water to try to put the fire out. So. Uh, a lot of people are out and about in downtown Indianapolis tonight, and there have been some issues, but there are certainly also a lot of people going uh, around trying to help people out where they can tonight, too. Mm -hmm. And the governor and the mayor each had their words about what we saw overnight and what we're seeing echoed and mimicked here tonight as well. The governor earlier saying that, you know, injuring the innocent in response to an injustice is counterproductive. I've asked the Indiana State Police to fully support and make resources available to local communities across our state. We have not seen here tonight in some of our live pictures that state police mm -hmm. presence, but we've certainly have seen local presence with IMPD as well as our deputies out there. And the mayor yeah. had said, please go home by seven o'clock. Right. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you are at risk to be arrested as you're demonstrating and perhaps in some instances vandalizing the city. Yeah, you're right. We've not seen state police, though, uh, at least from our camera positions out and about tonight, though, uh, obviously a heavy presence from IMPD as we continue uh, to look at these live pictures here just down the street from the state house and now police uh, sheriff's deputies again on the move uh, right there on Monument Circle on the south spoke of the circle uh, moving uh, toward the, the west side of downtown Indianapolis tonight amidst these now dispersing protests. Uh, Russ McQuaid live right now. Russ, what are you seeing? That's Russ McQuaid and there you see it. More sheriff's deputies arriving here at the corner of Market and Illinois. We're just down from the Indiana State House. 
Firecrackers have gone off. A crowd dispersed in uh, Corbin. If you can pan to the left, you'll be able to show part of the police response along this block. Uh, at this point, uh, it, there's no there's no winning this battle out here on the streets tonight so much as it is just wearing uh, this crowd out, seeing how much damage they can do again to, for the second night in a row to the TJ Maxx. I keep hearing uh, breaking glass down here to the north of me on Illinois Street. We've also had a report of several fire uh, fires set in uh, downtown. So at this hour, uh, it, it, the crowd continues to disperse. It's hard to tell if it's as numerous as it was just a couple hours ago. Uh, tear gas has been thrown in multiple locations and they are attempting to uh, at least disperse and wear this crowd out, but it's going to be a long evening. And as you are watching right there, an arrest go down on the corner uh, right here at uh, TJ Maxx. Uh, even as we speak, uh, the officers uh, just moments ago, we watched them retreat and then when they were taunted, turn back around. So. Uh, this is uh, the situation we are watching in downtown Indianapolis. You're watching an arrest go down. We saw several arrests made over in the vicinity of the Whole Foods when tear gas was first thrown at about 9 o'clock tonight. There's also been some damage reported to 251 East Ohio Street. That's where the Marion County Prosecutor's Office is. We watched some dumpster fires, and we also watched police advance on a group of uh, protesters with their arms interlocked. So at this point, uh, the battle for downtown continues. It's off and on, it moves around, it is sporadic. It has been sent as far as 300 North on Meridian and then all the way down towards uh, South Street. Uh, so it's encompassed quite a bit of the Mile Square. And there is a young man who is on his way to the Marion County Jail. Live, downtown Indianapolis, Russ McQuaid, CBS4, Fox 59 News. All right, Russ, thank you. And as you were giving that report and we watched that young man be detained, IMPD just releasing an advisory here. He's saying downtown is not safe at this time. Residents are advised to avoid the area. So an advisory just coming in from IMPD. As we saw another arrest play out uh, on camera, the third one we've seen here just in the last half hour or so. Uh, Bierschel, you mentioned uh, Mayor Hogsett's words earlier today. We also got a statement just tonight from the Greater Indianapolis NAACP, a statement they issued uh, on these protests. We, we mentioned some of this earlier. Uh, the NAACP here in Indy uh, saying that they're in shock after the senseless death of jo George Floyd because of the actions of Minneapolis police and share that community's wishes to hold those officers accountable. But I'm going to read from some of that statement. They also say some of the actions, however, that occurred last night in Indianapolis to show solidarity were, in their words, uh, disheartening. The NAACP says when a peaceful protest descends into a chaotic situation where some individuals are determined to damage property, it runs counter to the principles we all hold dear. They go on to say violence and vandalism are uh, no way to express or show your support and that their branch disavows and condemns this behavior and that this behavior does nothing to bring light to inequities. And that's what IMPD Chief uh, Taylor, as well as Mayor Hawks had said in their joint press conference earlier today. And I know we were talking about it earlier that they said Indiana State Police, they had reached out and those resources were available. We have not seen any Indiana State Police patrol cars out there at the scene. Um, and also Mayor Hawks had said earlier in his press conference that seven o'clock deadline, but he said he wanted to give protesters ample time that four o'clock to seven o'clock that three hour time to have these protests and he was very clear at seven o'clock he he had asked and he had spoken with the organizers of these protests and said seven o'clock being asked to leave and clearly that did not happen we still saw hundreds and hundreds of protesters after seven o'clock and then around that nine o'clock hour is when this turned destructive and yeah, right at that corner we're watching there where TJ Maxx is just down the, the street from the state house we're also seeing some reports of a, a few fireworks possibly being set off in, in trash cans uh, in that area and perhaps even inside uh, that TJ Maxx uh, store which have created some uh, some pretty loud booms from time to time so uh, obviously uh, a volatile situation here uh, downtown tonight for Indianapolis Metro Police and Marion County Sheriff's deputies as they continue to patrol the downtown area after uh, today's protest uh, escalated and then uh, kind of scattered as we've discussed here mm -hmm. into smaller 
uh, groups of demonstrators and, and others who are out and about tonight. Uh, Aaron Cantrell is, I think, still on Monument Circle. Aaron, what's going on? Uh, you're now there by the Hilton as well. What, what are you uh, seeing and hearing? Well, Dan, we're actually right here next to the TJ Maxx, which they have been uh, vandalized here. Someone uh, broke the glass here and uh, potentially may have stole some items here. So police are trying to get a handle on this situation right here. There's also a pretty large crowd down there at the state house uh, we're trying to make our way down there as well um, but monument circle is pretty quiet behind us here so it looks like the activity has moved from monument circle to the outer areas here but there's still a huge crowd out here but police they're on standby uh, trying to get a handle on the situation and probably try to figure out who exactly did this damage here to TJ Maxx, but still a lot of uh, protesters down here, a huge police presence, um, but that's what we're seeing out here uh, so far, Dan. And there's yeah, another there's loud another one. Yeah, be careful there, Brett. It sounds like more tear gas. Yep, uh, uh, Aaron, be careful. Oh, goodness, wow. yeah. Oh, that was fireworks. Fireworks, fireworks, fireworks there. yeah. We had heard reports of fireworks being set off in the area, and sure enough, um, right in front of the state capitol there, uh, on Capitol and Market, just uh, down the street from the Hilton and the TJ Maxx downtown. Scenes here now at this point at the State House, at the Convention Center, by Monument Circle, CCB, right. the City County Building, and we've also now seen them across the nation. So here, just now, getting to the point of of having that frustration now echoed in this way where we're seeing more so violent protests and demonstrations earlier in the day, saw a completely different picture, a completely different message. But now we are seeing that confrontation with authorities who are down there. That's both deputies and officers who have already said earlier in the day that seven o'clock was that deadline to right. try and wrap mm -hmm. things up to go home and if need be come back tomorrow and yes. have this conversation again but that's not where we are right now no. we are still seeing demonstrators who are out there we're still seeing officers who are out there and if you can see a little bit closer to that tj max you can still see some words that have been written on many of these buildings vandalization that's yeah. happened one of the words we saw there was sean reed right i think right now we may have brett who's speaking giving us a report let's listen into what he's saying right now uh, but they were removing those tables from the street. We talked to uh, the owner of Chatterbox down here who had boarded up his business. And for the most part, what we have seen with those businesses that have been boarded up, uh, that has been mainly graffiti. A lot of that uh, has not had their uh, windows smashed in. Uh, we were just at the 16-bit uh, uh, bar, had uh, their window, or I'm sorry, the boards across their windows. Uh, the Witt apartment next door had their windows smashed. Um, so, so for a lot of the businesses that did not have those boards up, uh, those windows have been smashed there uh, along along uh, along that mass app. So since last night, I mean, he yeah. has been um, through through throughout it all. And also, I know that we had said earlier, but we do want another reminder. IMPD has put out a, a, a release saying residents should avoid downtown because it is not safe. As you can see right there, they tweeted that just within the last 15 minutes or so. We've seen large crowds of people uh, throughout the afternoon, throughout the evening in downtown Indianapolis. Obviously, the, uh, the official protest uh, got underway at 4 o'clock. We saw a lot of people on Monument Circle there protesting George Floyd's death and other uh, police-related situations that have happened here in Indianapolis and around the country. But obviously, uh, Birchel, as we've talked about uh, throughout the week, George Floyd's death um, so vividly playing out on camera uh, the way it did has uh, has really uh, started a, a difficult conversation, restarted a difficult mm -hmm. conversation all around the country, and um, has has shown us uh, something that uh, that many people do not want to see but know exists. Mm -hmm. And it was very very hard to watch that play out, just as it is very hard now to see. Um, what has transpired in the days since. Right, and as we look right now, we want to let you know we're taking you to Seattle because this is a nationwide conversation yeah. and demonstration and protest that's happening. And one thing you just said there, Dan, is this is a conversation that's restarting. Right. And that's why so many protesters and demonstrators have felt that frustration because it's not the first time exactly. that we're talking about the issues that plague our community with the relation between police and African Americans. Right. So that's why you see a lot of people who say, you know, despite the fact that this might not be the way you want to hear it, this is what I have to say, and this is the moment to say it. Now, obviously, the vandalization, the looting that we've seen, that's been decried by many people. I've said this is not the way, but for some, that is what 
is in their heart and that's the action they yeah. feel like taking right now. And we've seen the pictures right here in Indianapolis as well. So it's not limited to one city. It is something we are seeing nationwide and it's something we're seeing at home. You, you've oh. seen some protesters uh, talk about uh, the fact that uh, their voices have not been heard any other way. Uh, and that this is uh, the, the way to get their message out tonight. You see a number of protesters there with signs, no justice, uh, no peace. This is on, I believe, Illinois Street. And you saw a moment ago, we we're gonna pan over, you'll see it again, the first watch restaurant right there uh, where mm -hmm. we had heard reports earlier of someone trying to set that restaurant on fire and some passersby actually came along with water and put that small fire out. And now we see police uh, moving down the street right where uh, some of these protesters had it looked like maybe tried to uh, either block the road or yeah. make their presence known there in the street holding those signs as police pass by. We have watched this over and over and I, I, I have to go back to what you said Dan on the move that every yeah. time we see IMPD cars they're on the move to somewhere else and that's when those smaller groups broke off from this protest and we have seen them all over downtown whether it's been on the circle um, a, a, uh, over on Pennsylvania, where our crews have been, a IMPD is literally on the move with these protesters, following them and trying to track them down and get some kind of a handle on this situation. And uh, there they go again. So again, if you're just joining us now, we are breaking into coverage right now, talking about what is going on, the protests and demonstrations we are seeing in downtown Indianapolis, as well as across the nation for George Floyd, and in some cases, different cases in respective cities in Indianapolis. The focus has also been on Dre Jean Reed, also known as Sean Reed. As you may remember, three weeks ago, the city certainly rallied and had a conversation then, protests and demonstrations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was an African-American man, about 21, who live streamed a police chase right. that was happening. Yes. The yeah. chief, as well as the assistant chief, started that saying he was driving at some points 90 miles an hour on the highway going into neighborhoods driving erratically so people watched that Facebook live and then he got out of his vehicle there was a foot chase from there you saw a bit of an exchange and then all you heard was gunfire officers have said that Dre Jean Reed did fire at the officer that fired the leak the lethal shot at Dre Jean Reed but that case still has caused a lot of controversy in our city, and it's part of the reason we're seeing some of the protests now, which were peaceful earlier, but taking a turn this evening. That, and that was case, only three yeah. weeks ago. I mean, that right. is still very fresh in the mind. You know, it, it wasn't that long ago for that, that case to happen. And obviously emotions were tense after that case, but not to the level that we are obviously seeing now. Okay. This is Minneapolis live pictures here right now. Yeah, Minneapolis, obviously uh, the scene of George Floyd's death on Monday, and you can see again a heavy police presence in Minneapolis, and we've heard reports uh, that police have been uh, more aggressive tonight there in Minneapolis. Uh, the National Guard called in as well uh, as they try and stem the tide of several days now of protests there in Minnesota and you can see from these uh, aerial photos uh, still a, a lot of police there in several different parts of Minneapolis. We've seen fires set at, at police stations there in recent days and a number of very large protests. A lot of arrests as well. Police mm -hmm. in Minnesota mm -hmm. saying uh, that a number of arrests there involved people coming in from out of town right. uh, to protest there in Minneapolis. Um, and again tonight uh, police are uh, actively involved in trying to keep the peace there tonight in Minnesota. And you talked a bit about that increased presence that we've seen here in yeah. Minneapolis compared to nights before. The governor had already put a curfew in place yesterday. Right. That was 8 o'clock. And just in the last hour, Governor Tim Walz tweeting out that we are bringing the full force of goodness and righteousness to restore order to our streets tonight. Please be safe. Please help our communities and please stay home. Then about 40 minutes ago, he made another plea for people to go home. Similar, though not a curfew, yeah. a request mm -hmm. that was made by the mayor for people to go home in our city. Right. And that was around Hey, we just got word that in about 15 minutes, IMPD Chief Randall Taylor will be giving a live briefing to the media to talk about the situation tonight uh, that has escalated in downtown Indianapolis. So we will be standing by uh, to bring you Chief Taylor's words here uh, to our city uh, at about 1145 or so tonight as we continue to watch live pictures across the city of Indianapolis and continue to wait to, to hear what Metro Police are doing tonight, what their plan is for the rest of the night moving forward. Uh, will we hear about more of a curfew being installed? Obviously, the mayor had asked uh, yeah. people to go home at 7 o'clock, uh, but that has not happened in many cases tonight as these protests have continued and have escalated in some cases as well throughout the city.
Let's go to a little bit of video here from earlier in the evening to give you a picture of when things did make that shift and we saw what looks like tear gas being deployed. Protesters, demonstrators here running off. This is right by Market and the Whole Foods you see there and uh, actually the city building is just down right. the street from right there too and so door, is yeah. the city market. So we saw protesters later on in the evening after the main demonstration and protest kind of fizzled out, moving in different pockets. This was one place they landed. You see the smoke there, what looks like fireworks going off. And from that point until where we are tonight, we have seen a turn here in Indianapolis. IMPD uh, tweeted out uh, not long after that happened that uh, someone in the crowd had uh, launched some sort of projectile uh, toward the police. That's what uh, IMPD said happened moments before. Uh, firing the tear gas there. Um, but again, just as we saw last night uh, in Indianapolis, it had been a very peaceful demonstration mm -hmm. for the most part. Some minor damage here and there, large crowds. These are visuals now and video from last night. You see some of the damage, some of the vandalism, uh, some of the graffiti. Uh, but again, it, it all kind of turned tonight when police um, had to fire tear gas on protesters. Aaron Cantrell. Uh, is out and about tonight. We're, we're listening in now as he uh, describes the situation uh, again, live tonight. Uh, Aaron? It's very surprising to still see all this traffic down here uh, because there are just so many pedestrians out here. And like IMBD said earlier, it is just not safe to be down here at all. It looks like we have some people running over here as well. Maybe police uh, threw out some more tear gas here. So maybe that might be the reason why they're running here. Uh, but this is pretty much been the scene down here since about 930 this evening. Uh, just pro protesters throughout the city uh, trying to protest for uh, what they believe in. But some of them have also caused a lot of destruction. Um, but it doesn't look like it's letting up anytime soon, um, Angel and Colby. Thank you so much, Aaron. And I, I know earlier we were looking at all the businesses that were damaged and this we are now standing by waiting for IMPD's um, second press conference that we're going to have. Um, he, uh, Mayor Hogsett and Chief Randall had a press conference earlier this afternoon. We are probably less than 10 minutes ish away from another press conference. In the press conference earlier, there were 27 or at least 30 businesses that were damaged last night. I know that they made 27 arrests. They had, um, I think, five officers that were hurt, three protesters that were hurt, and that was all last night. So we are now in night number two of this. And I want to take a moment so we can listen from the mayor himself, the words he had to say earlier today. But there is no path forward that relies on violence and lawlessness as a vehicle for change. I will not deny your anger for it is fairly earned. But it is my sincere belief that in moments of anger, we all as humans have a fundamental choice. The choice between love or hate. The choice between love or hate, Mayor Hogsett's words uh, earlier today. Uh, these are visuals again from last night. And again, uh, tonight we have seen uh, another escalation uh, of the situation here downtown with uh, more vandalism. We have seen more arrests. We've seen more tear gas. And again, just within the last 20 minutes or so, at 11.20 tonight, IMPD sending out a message over Twitter and on other platforms that downtown Indianapolis is not safe at this time and that residents are advised to avoid the area. That's the advisory they put out tonight. And again, all of this happening as we continue to see in, in many of these live pictures tonight, traffic moving through downtown Indianapolis streets, people uh, still walking, in some cases running away from tear gas. There's one of the dumpsters that was set on fire. Let's listen into Brett Cast as he describes the situation there. Uh, as we were walking back, we heard a number of gunshots, and, and in that Mass Ave area where we were at, right by the Eagle, there, there was just no police presence whatsoever. Um, so we, we pulled off. We're actually sitting uh, in a secure location right now, uh, so we are okay, but, uh, but we had to pull off and, and get out of that situation. Um, and and it, I think it's a lot different than, you know, 
when you're at the different you know, areas uh, where there is a large police presence, it's a lot different than in the outskirts of downtown, like Mass Ave, uh, and you go north towards there. Um, there's a lot of people kind of spread out, and that is where we had seen, or at least heard, uh, some of those gunshots uh, being fired. Sure. So, that, okay. so we have pulled off uh, since then. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we appreciate that. Again, there's the, uh, the advisory issued by IMPD that downtown is not safe. All of this happening, as we discussed earlier, amidst a time where more people are starting to get out and about downtown. Restaurants have been open on Mass Ave and on Monument Circle for outdoor dining. They open uh, more fully starting on Monday. And in fact, some of those same restaurants that just opened up had to close early tonight. We heard a report uh, from Brett, in fact, uh, that some downtown restaurants tonight had been canceling reservations in the 8.30, 9 o'clock time frame after the protesters had uh, made their way down Massachusetts Avenue in the Mass Ave area, that some restaurants closed down early tonight, moved all the tables and barricades inside and, and closed down for business. And again, now police telling people to get out of the downtown area. As we saw earlier, uh, live pictures uh, along Washington Street downtown where uh, people were trying to uh, perhaps leave parking garages and get out of downtown Indy mm -hmm. and at the same time tear gas uh, being fired uh, down the street uh, in the middle of downtown Indianapolis tonight uh, as uh, as people are trying to make their way out and about or perhaps leave the city this and evening. As you had mentioned with those restaurants closing that we're so excited to finally reopen um, after two months of being shut down. Right. I know we've shown that video quite a few times from that Whole Foods. I do want to say that we heard reports that that Whole Foods actually closed down early as well. Right. I mean that they just weren't taking any chances and here's that video again and that's when our first report of the tear gas that was thrown in to the crowd there and that's really what escalated it. I know Beershaw you said that that switch just flipped and then it the destruction started and it, it got way more violent right then right so we've already i mean we are in the midst of a pandemic right we are already mm -hmm. in a tough time but for so many people that have been protesting they have said the pandemic didn't start with the coronavirus the pandemic has started with an injustice that's been rooted in our country for quite some time and now boiling over in pictures like what you are seeing here we've heard from our leaders we've heard from our advocates we've heard from our clergy that there is no excuse for the violence yeah. there is no excuse for the looting that we're seeing as a result of that but people are upset and frustrated and they're taking to our community into yeah. the street to voice that a lot of frustrations uh, boiling over tonight uh, no doubt and uh, as we continue to look at uh, this footage from earlier today that's again when things really turned right uh, after nine o'clock after the protest had moved toward the city county building uh, when tear gas was fired after police say uh, someone had launched uh, some sort of projectile at some of their officers. And again, we have seen police take tactical moves uh, mm -hmm. since that time, uh, advancing on some groups of protesters, making arrests, um, and also uh, trying to uh, literally put out fires. Uh, yes. Some fires uh, that were uh, set ablaze tonight, some dumpsters along Pennsylvania Avenue. It's been a tense situation that really got going tonight after nine o'clock. And again, just about three minutes from now, we'll be hearing Chief Randall Taylor as he gives a live briefing uh, to the media and to the people of Indianapolis tonight who are watching these pictures play out. Even if you're not out and about tonight you're, and you're just watching these pictures play out, watching what's happening in our city. It's something that I think uh, certainly speaks to so many people here in central Indiana and beyond tonight. This isn't just happening here. It's this not. is happening in cities all across All across the America state, all tonight. across the country. Terre Haute also today, seeing uh, protests, th this video from earlier today. There was last night in Fort Wayne, uh, a large demonstration and some issues as well as the night went along. So this is, uh, this is a situation, Birchelle and Lindsay, that that continues uh, to grab the nation um, collectively uh, we're all we're all so closely watching uh, th these protests and this conversation uh, after the George Floyd death, and uh, and in the midst of a pandemic uh, that has killed a hundred thousand people, um, now now there is a new conversation happening this week in the midst of everything else going on. Right, and it's a pivotal one that's happening too. Yeah. I mean, so many of the demonstrators and protesters who have been out not just in Indianapolis, but as you see here in Terre Haute, in Fort, in Fort Wayne, in Chicago, in Detroit, in so many major metros and small areas too, have centered around something that maybe for so, much, so long people have not 
had the courage to discuss or had the will to discuss, but today are taking this opportunity to have a conversation and to make their voices heard. But as we've seen throughout the evening, that conversation has certainly turned to a different one as people are more confrontational, as we see some vandalism occur across our city here in Indianapolis. And Lindsay, I know earlier you saw some of what was occurring downtown mm -hmm. compared to what we're seeing now live in our city. Right. And even downtown um, Indy Inc., they um, had a uh, statement that they issued earlier that said you can protest, that's totally fine, mm -hmm. but do it in a peaceful way. And the damage that has been caused, they said it will take millions of dollars to repair and some right. of those damaged businesses may not even reopen. We do want to listen into our Aaron Cantrell who is live downtown right now. Yeah, Lindsay, so we're actually here by the State House, and uh, there was actually a huge crowd earlier, but they all dispersed after police uh, released some of that tear gas. But there are still several police officers up here by the statue near the State House uh, protecting that statue because earlier there were a lot of protesters there. Um, and it looks like police actually uh, just blocked off uh, the capital slightly here. Um, so uh, they're still out here. There's a lot of activity still going on. I'm sure you still heard. Uh, that tear gas being released um, just seconds ago, but still a lot of activity going on down here. Huge police presence, and I would take IMPD's advice, avoid downtown at all costs, because uh, there's just a lot of activity going on, and it seems as if once police arrive to a situation, they disperse a group, that group just goes to another location, and the police have to show up there and disperse that group, and they end up back into another location. So it's a very busy night here for law enforcement um, here in our city. State police there as well, state capitol police right there near the state house. Aaron, um, how has the, the police presence evolved throughout the night uh, at the locations you've, you've been in here throughout the city? Well, Dan, uh, at the beginning of this, I think there was just so much happening. Police could not be everywhere. So there were several incidents uh, where there was just no police at all. Earlier when uh, two of those dumpsters caught on fire along Pennsylvania, there was no police activity in that area until after the fact. But then again, once police showed up, they dispersed a group, but then that group moved somewhere else. But uh, it seems like the police have showed up a little bit more, maybe because the group has gotten smaller throughout the night, but they're still very, very busy and they're trying to make it to every scene here. As you can hear, those sirens are going off. Looks like we have a fire truck passing us right here. Uh, so still very, very active down here, Dan. Okay. Aaron, thank you. Be careful out there. Uh, we want to show you some pictures as well uh, right now from Wayne Township. Uh, they just posted this video of a vehicle fire, they say, uh, involving a Molotov cocktail and one person injured in this incident as well. So we're not just uh, looking at situations tonight in downtown Indianapolis. We don't know exactly um, w what was involved here, if this had anything to do at all with, um, with the protests we've seen downtown. But again, another fiery situation tonight in Wayne Township. And this is right off of Raymond Street. And one person was hurt. Our producers just told us that as well. One person was hurt in this incident. So this is obviously not in the downtown area in the Wayne Township. I believe they said Raymond Street. Um, but obviously a very busy night for first responders. And we are still waiting to hear from IMPD Chief Taylor with that press conference that should be coming any minute. Of course, we're monitoring that and we'll bring that to you live as well. Yeah. And the chief was part of the conversation earlier in the mm -hmm. afternoon calling for peace and also accepting that protesters had the right to make their voices heard, but also encouraging people to remain peaceful, as did the mayor earlier today, too, and asking for people to leave, wrap up the demonstrations at yeah. 7 o'clock. That has not happened. We've seen some protesters and demonstrators who have chosen to stay beyond that point, and we've also seen the shift in the conversation message from protesters as we're seeing right. more violence throughout the evening. That too. call went out earlier today, a, a call for, for peace and calm tonight after this afternoon's protest. Unfortunately, it didn't happen that way. It, it does seem as if um, the, the crowds have been dispersed yeah. in many different places and uh, that perhaps um, perhaps we're starting uh, to see uh, things begin to calm down in some respect, though now it's a much more difficult situation tactically for police to be in many different places at once. Um, and as you see here, police presence uh, tonight outside of the State House where there were a number of issues last night as well. Aaron Cantrell was just describing uh, the scene there moments ago uh, underneath the shadow, the halls of state government there, state police, IMPD, sheriff's deputies on the scene tonight uh, trying 
uh, to keep the peace amidst uh, everything that's happening. Again, we're just moments away now from Chief Randall Taylor, who will be speaking to our city about the situation here in Indianapolis tonight. Um, Aaron is uh, describing uh, some of the goings on there uh, near the state house, as we just heard. Um, obviously, uh, the situation uh, has continued to escalate tonight, and um, and guys, uh, hopefully, uh, police uh, will be able to uh, will be able to send a message here uh, moments from now that does in, indeed bring some calm uh, to our city and begins uh, that process of of uh, getting us toward the tail end of what we've seen here tonight. Chief Taylor had said in the press conference earlier, he said for the most part yesterday, the protests were peaceful and everyone did yeah. play by the rules and it was just the small groups and that's when it turned destructive and he was very clear on that. And this again will be his second press conference today after last night as well. Um, you just saw it play out from last night. There were 30, 30 businesses that were vandalized, 27 people arrested. We've been showing you live on air at least two to three people that were arrested as well as when the tear gas was going off. I mean, this is night number two of a very, very destructive night here in downtown Indy. And and they're hard images to yeah, see. I mean, really we are. all go downtown, you know. It, the places we've all it. been to. And, right. Right. And again, this is uh, happening, Beer Shell, in city after city, it in is. every major city in America uh, tonight. Um, large protests. And again, uh, looking at these live pictures here, downtown Indy, outside of the State House. Um, it has prompted, restarted, as we said earlier, mm -hmm. uh, a nationwide conversation um, that, uh, that certainly has reached a new level here this week. And in the same way that Mayor Joe Hogsett has called for people to remain calm and to go home a bit earlier than what we're seeing here, many other city leaders yeah. in, across the nation have done the same, have made a plea for people, yes, if you want to protest, be out and protest, but to remain peaceful. But at the center of this entire conversation, of course, is where this all started in Minneapolis right. with the death of George Floyd. And we know obviously a lot has moved forward since that death. There's been charges, there's been arrests, but mm -hmm. for many people, there's still questions about what happened there and what happened in many other cases that are being investigated across our nation. And there's a call to have justice and to have accountability, to have transparency and have a conversation with the nation about police relations with minority communities, specifically with African-American communities. Right, let's check in now with Brett Cast. Um, Brett, uh, obviously the situation you've been out and about tonight, you were out and about last night as well. What can you tell us uh, about the differences you've seen uh, tonight, 24 hours after uh, the first uh, protests uh, turned fiery in Indianapolis? Yeah, well, Dan, as you can as you can see, we uh, we don't have our camera up right now. We're just audio only. We uh, pulled ourselves off uh, of the street here tonight. Uh, we so I think the difference is for for uh, for me particularly last night we were kind of in in the middle of, of Monument Circle and the State House and kind of where all the police presence was. Tonight we began on, on Mass Ave, kind of where those restaurants uh, had had boarded up some windows, kind of in that preparation, uh, and we kind of stuck around that area. It was a little bit tough uh, with different block you know blockages and and uh, tear gas to get back downtown. So we stuck on on the outward part, um, and, and really that's when it we we just started to really feel unsafe because we heard a number of gunshots in in our general vicinity. Uh, we had some stuff thrown at us, and at this point there was no. There's no police presence whatsoever. Mass Ave has, has really no streetlights at that spot with the Eagle. Um, so it was completely dark there. Uh, and, and we heard, you know, uh, glass shattering and whatnot. And, and after we had uh, some water bottles kind of being thrown at us in different directions that we couldn't see, uh, that is when me and my photographer felt that it was best to pull ourselves uh, um, off. So, but I think my comparison to last night is really based on the fact of where I was, where we were stationed, you know, because we were kind of out of the, the, the fray of it, I guess, as you could say, sure. uh, kind of in the outskirts for well, the most part. We're, we're glad you're safe and, and, we're, and we thank you for, for your hard work down, down there both uh, tonight and last night as, as well. Uh, Brett, to, yeah, thank you. Retreat, um, we, we are hearing, by the way, we want to let you know uh, some more breaking news. IMPD now is uh, confirming that there has been uh, a person shot. We don't know their condition or exactly the nature of uh, this particular shooting, but in the downtown area at Alabama and New York, there's been a, a confirmed shooting there in that area. We may hear more about that from the police chief. We're standing by. Uh, we've arrived there at the scene where the chief will be uh, delivering this briefing here. Um, and uh, Brett, you were on the scene of that um, incident at Alabama and New York. Is that yeah, is that when Dan, you, that's when you left? Now that you're, I mean, scene? that is where we heard the gunshots. We were standing right there. That is where the fire wow. was. We were right there. Uh, we were kind of at um, that had been Delaware and New York, and had kind of moved over to Alabama 
and, and New York, I believe, actually it was New Jersey and New yeah, York, but I right believe that, area, that yeah. is right next to Alabama, if I'm correct. Right. Yeah, that's right. Um, we were standing at New Jersey and, 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 and um, excuse me, uh, New Jersey and New York, wait. <laughs> yes, New Jersey and, and New York. Right in that where same area, not far uh, from Mass Ave, yeah. And right leading up to yeah, that, no, what was no, happening? Yeah, no, no, not far at all. Um, there's a commissary barber uh, kind of right at that corner. Yeah. There's a bank right there. Um, that is kind of where we were standing. We, we just uh, had, had saw a dumpster fire at that corner. Um, that is actually where we were getting ready for a live shot. And, and the mm -hmm. issue, too, with, with these situations, you know, we were away from the police presence, and there was it was right. kind of empty in that area. We didn't see many people. So we turned the light on for our camera. I can't see with a light. And, a water, and it, you know, we had a water bottle thrown at us right before that, and wow. I didn't know where it was coming from. So that's when we had decided to get out of there, and we heard the gunshots walking back. And we were right in that general area. And, and from what it sounded like to us, it was just kind of aimless shooting into the, we don't know the air. We, you know, I, I don't want to speculate um, yeah. as, as to where the shots were being fired. Obviously, as you said, someone had uh, been shot. So we certainly um, hope at, at that okay. point, yeah. just with the number of gunshots we were hearing, we, we absolutely uh, did not feel safe there. And we're glad you're all right and uh, glad you're safe. Um, obviously, that's something we'll ask the chief about. Uh, what, after that shooting, I, I imagine people, people fled that area just as you did for the most part. Part? I mean, there really weren't many people in that yeah. area at the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's kind of what I'm saying. We were on the outskirts, and it was just a few couple people in groups walking around. There was not a, a organized group or protest or, or something going on there. It was really um, just kind of a, a few people here and there um, kind of break into windows. We saw a, a man walking with a computer down Mass Ave. I believe probably from one of the, I think there's a, a, a realtor or something, you know, there's a couple of businesses there uh, that are office buildings. Um, so that's what we kind of saw walking down uh, and, and that, so there really wasn't much of a crowd there. So when, when I'm saying the gunshots, it was more so people walking the street. We didn't see much, many people running away at that point. G yeah, Brett, just now getting preliminary information from police about a, a, another shooting that they're on the scene of right now of two people yeah, and shot in the East Market Street area. Um, so right, Dan, this is right the exact area yeah. we have been in, and, yeah. and that is exactly why um, you know, we felt it necessary to pull yeah. off. That is, that is the exact area. Well, it's kind of outside did. of where the police presence is. And we heard a number, and I'm saying, I, I can't even give you a number, but it was constant. There was about two or three different instances, I'd say. Uh, the first was, we, we saw the guy who had the gun. We turned around as, as he was walking away, but we did hear the shots. That was at the corner of New York and Pennsylvania. That is right by 16-bit, and that is right mm -hmm. by the Witt apartment building there. That is right by the War Memorial, just a little bit uh, to, to the north of that. Um, and, that, and that seemed to be into the air. We, weren't, we did not see him actually fire the weapon, but we did see a weapon and did hear the, the, the sounds. So, and it was kind of in that general area is where it sounded like a, a number of gunshots were being fired into the distance and even kind of close to us, so. And, and I, I can even hear sirens in the background yeah. there too. This um, is exactly, yeah, and I'm, I'm at, so full, full transparency, I'm actually inside my apartment building, uh, which is uh, by, by chance in, the, in this area. Right. Um, and so, but we have heard our, our building, our main lobby has been smashed. The glass wow. is shattered. Wow. Um, our security guard I did see was down there, but he's just a, a one guy, so I don't know what exactly uh, he's able to do. There was no police um, in that area at all. Um, so I, I've ran into a couple of the residents in the halls. They saw our camera gear as we were walking back. Um, so we've tried to kind of, uh, you know, get out of that area. And these reports that we're getting here, I mean, two shootings downtown, the second shooting with reports of two people being shot near Market Street. This is what city leaders wanted to avoid tonight. Yeah. This is what they warned about wanting people to go home to avoid situations like this where we escalate to a point of violence that would include people being shot. And these two different reports of two separate shootings, these are just coming in within the last five or 10 minutes that we are hearing right now. So, I mean, definitely still an active scene downtown and even on the outskirts, like Brett was saying as well. Um, we're still yeah. standing by waiting for yeah. IMPD Chief Randall Taylor's press conference as well. And I know we were saying earlier about uh, obviously these protests are happening all across the country. Right. A lot of other cities have put into um, effect curfews, which will I'll be very interested if that's brought up um, tonight in Could this be. press conference yeah. as well. We're coming up on the midnight hour there. You see the podium uh, where we will hear from IMPD Chief Randall Taylor. Uh, momentarily, as you mentioned, this this has been happening uh, across the country again tonight. We've seen uh, fiery protests and uh, and some violence as well. Uh, even seeing reports that uh, some barricades uh, had been knocked down uh, by the White House uh, tonight as well as another large protest in Washington D.C. right in front of the White House and front of the uh, South Lawn of the White House continues 
uh, to draw heavy police presence tonight. But this is here in Indianapolis, live pictures uh, from the location where Chief Taylor will be giving a briefing here moments from now to talk about the situation in downtown Indianapolis and uh, what the city will be doing tonight. A lot of people uh, wondering what the plan will be moving forward in terms of a curfew, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. in terms of what uh, kinds of uh, arrest numbers we've seen tonight, uh, whether people who've been arrested have been from here in Indianapolis or out of town. We saw in Minnesota they had some out-of-town protesters um, who were arrested. And now, obviously, as we look at these live pictures of, of dumpster fires and tear gas uh, being deployed, uh, pictures from earlier, footage from earlier, um, we are waiting to hear what the chief and the city uh, have to say about the plan here moving forward for the